growth period of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born on Monday morning 9 Rabi'ul Awl, the year of the elephant. Coinciding with April 20th or 22 571 AD, there are many opinions of scholars about when the Prophet Muhammad was born. He Shalalahu Alayhi Wasallam was born from the Quraysh tribe, which was the most respected and respected tribe in Arab society at that time. From the Quraysh tribe, he is from the Hazyam clan, a member of the tribe who is also the most respected among the Quraysh tribe. Rasulullah Shalalahu Alayhi Wasallam was born orphaned. Because of his father, Abdullah had died when his mother, Amina conceived him at the age of two months. After giving birth, the mother immediately brought the baby to her grandfather Abdul Muttalib. How happy the grandfather heard the news of the birth of his grandson. Then taking the baby into the Kaaba, he prayed to Allah and thanked him. The child was then given the name Muhammad, a name unknown to the Arab community at that time. Then on the seventh day after his birth, Rasulullah Shalalahu Alayhi Wasallam was circumcised. Life in Bani Sa'ad Besides his mother, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was also breastfed by Zuwayba, slave of Abu Lahab. Then, as was customary in urban society at that time, his mother looked for rural women to breastfeed her son. Then a woman named Halima bint Abid Zuaib was chosen from the Sa'ad bin Bakar tribe, who was later better known as Halima as Sadaya. Indeed, by the will of Allah, Sel, until Halima as Sadaya breastfed the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was small. Because when he was first offered to breastfeed him, he felt reluctant to accept it, because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was an orphan who could not be expected to receive a proper material reward from him. However, when he could no longer find another baby to nurse, he accepted Muhammad's baby to be breastfed in the village of Bani Sa'ad. It turns out that he did not make the wrong choice, because the one he is breastfeeding has been prepared by Allah to become the greatest human being on the face of this earth who will bring light to his faithful people. Then naturally, after that Halima as Sadaya's life was full of blessings. Thus, the first five years of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he passed in a village area with a beautiful life and fresh air in the Bani Sa'ad Valley. This of course had a lot of influence on the growth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, both physically and psychologically. The event of splitting the chest, Syakas Sajr. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was five years old, and when he was still under the care of Halima as Sadaya in the village of Bani Sa'ad, a major event occurred which at the same time showed signs of his future prophethood. This event is known as the splitting of the chest, Syakas Sadr. One day, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was playing with his friends, suddenly the angel Gabriel came and ambushed him. Then he was laid down, then his chest was cut open, then his heart was taken then a clot of blood was removed from him, saying, this is the portion of the devil that is in you. Then the heart is washed in a golden vessel with Zamzam water, after which it is returned to its original place. Meanwhile, her playmates reported the incident to Halima and said, Muhammad was killed, Muhammad was killed. So they rushed to the place where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was originally, there they found the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a pale white state. After this incident, Halima was very worried about the safety of little Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Finally not long after that, he decided to return him to his mother in the city of Mecca. So Halima left for Mecca and with a heavy heart returned the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to his mother. Abandoned Beloved Mother After living with his mother for a while, at the age of six, his mother took him on a pilgrimage to her husband's grave in Yathrib. So they departed from the city of Mecca, walked 500 kilometers, accompanied by Amiman and financed by Abdul Muthalib. At their destination, they stayed a month. After that they returned to Mecca. But in the middle of the trip, his mother got sick and finally died in the village of Abwa, which is located between the cities of Mecca and Medina. Under the care of grandfather. 
The grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, was very compassionate towards his grandson who was orphaned at an early age. So the grandson was brought to his house, cared for and loved more than his own children. At that time Abdul Muttalib had a special seat under the Kaaba, no one dared to sit on it, even his children, they only dared to sit by his side. But the Prophet Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam, who was still a child at that time, actually played and sat on it. Carowan's uncle uncle took and pulled. But when the grandfather saw this, he instead forbade them saying, let him, for God's sake, this child has his own position. Finally the Prophet Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam sat down at his majlis, he rubbed his grandson's back with joy to see what they were doing. But again, little Muhammad felt his grandfather's affection for a long time. When Rasulullah Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam When he was eight years old, his grandfather died in Mecca. But before he died, he ordered his grandson to be cared for by his paternal uncle, Abu Talib. On his uncle's lap. Now Rasulullah Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam is in the care of his uncle who also loves him very much. Abu Talib looked after him along with his other children, even more loved and honored. And so on Abu Talib was always by the side of Rasulullah Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam, caring for him, protecting and defending him, even until he was appointed as an apostle. This went on for no less than 40 years. With Pastor Bahara. When the Prophet Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam was 12 years old, Abu Talib invited him to trade in Syria. Arriving at the village of Bushra, which at that time was part of the territory of Syria, they were greeted by a priest named Bahira. All of the entourage descended to meet the Bahira banquet except the Messenger of Allah. At the meeting, Abu Talib told about the Prophet Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam and his characteristics to Pastor Bahira. After hearing the story, the priest immediately announced that the child would become a human leader as he knew his characteristics from the books in his religion. So he asked Abu Talib not to take the child to Syria, for fear that the Jews would harm him there. Finally Abu Talib ordered his men to bring Rasulullah Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam back to Mecca. Dawn War At the age of 15, Rasulullah Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam participated in the Fijar War that took place between the Quraysh tribe who were allied with the Bani Kanana against the Kays Alan tribe. And the war was won by the Quraysh tribe. During the battle, Rasulullah Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam helped his uncles prepare arrows. Hilful Foothole After the Fijar War was over, peace was held which is known as Hilful Foothole, agreed upon in the month of Zulqaeda which is a Haram month, at Abdullah bin Juddin Atami's house. All the tribes of the Quraysh tribe participated in the agreement. Among its contents is an agreement and efforts to always defend anyone who is wronged by the people of Mecca. And they will punish the wrongdoer until he restores his rights. Rasulullah Salalahu Thalehi Wasallam participated in witnessing the agreement, even after he became an apostle, he still remembered and praised him, saying, I have witnessed the peace treaty at the house of Abdullah bin Juddin which I love more than the red camel. If I were invited again after the Islamic era, surely I would have complied.